Hi and welcome to this series of videos on this device and it came out at the end of uh, 2024. I picked up one a um, few weeks after that and the purpose of these videos is just to show you around it uh, help you decide whether it's for you or not and I'm going to go through all the basics of it in kind of plain English uh, so that you can understand how it works. If you've just bought one of these this will definitely help you get started. So first of all, what is the Poly-N synth? It's a synthesizer, pretty obviously, with eight different sound engines. Three of these may be played simultaneously. And they can either be played by the device's pads, as I did then, or via MIDI, using a MIDI keyboard, or a MIDI controller of some kind. The instrument is eight note polyphonic, and this polyphony is split between the three engines in any way the user wants. And I'll come back to that a bit later. Each of the three chosen synths may have its own sequencer and arpeggiator and there are three effects available to further enhance the sound. Physically the device is 11 inches by 8 inches and it's 1.4 inches high with the, the knob sticking out on the top and it weighs 2.6 pounds. So it's lightweight, very easy to cast around and if you've got a power bank you can power it from that. I've got mine plugged into the power adapter that comes with it but it's USB-C on the back of the device. We have the power button here which you just hold in to turn it on or turn it off. Then we have the USB-C socket. Then there's a tiny little hole here which is for resetting the device with a pin. Don't often have to do that of course. Moving here we have the micro SD card slot. Obviously there is a card in there you just push it in and push it to make it come out, pops out on a spring that contains all the scenes and all the, the data you need to run the machine. And then we have MIDI in, MIDI out and out. MIDI in and MIDI out obviously those are what we call TRS sockets so obviously you have to use TRS cables there, sort of mini jack cables and the socket on the far left is the out, it's the audio out and that's for plugging it into a computer or audio interface or headphones. On the top we've got this 2.4 by 1.8 inch OLED screen, really nice and clear. We've got these 15 continuous encoders, so there's no stop on them, they just go round and round and round uh, for changing parameters and various things. This knob here, the screen knob, is a special knob. It's got a detent on it, kind of a clicky feel to it. So we've got 11 what I call square buttons, two here, three here, and there's another six over here. And we'll come to what they all do a little bit later on. Of course, a big feature of this device is this section down here, where we have these 60 touch sensitive illuminated pads. This is a five by 12 arrangement. You can see different colors, and I'll explain those colors a bit later. In the box, you get the original USB-A power adapter with different standard plug sets. You get a Poly-N branded USB-C cable, two meters in length. You get a one times stereo 3.5 millimeter jack to two times 6.3 millimeter jack adapter. So in other words, that is a single stereo 3.5 mini jack to two full size jack adapters so that's if you want to plug it into something that only takes that kind of uh, plug. You get one MIDI type B 3.5 millimeter jack to a DIN if you're like a five pin DIN the old fashioned MIDI adapter. Like I said you get a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. You also get this micro SD to USB A dongle adapter so that's quite handy. You just take the card out the back of the machine put it in this and then you can put that in your a computer either directly into the computer or into a USB hub. You obviously get the warranty and safety stuff that nobody ever reads I'm sure but it's all in the box and an essential information book which is actually really good. I read that through cover to cover. Although it's not a full manual it's actually really good to get you up and running and answered quite a lot of my questions. At the top of the file hierarchy is the scene. You can actually save 1000 scenes to the micro SD card to the machine if you like so that's more than anyone's going to need I'm guessing. You can check which scene you currently have loaded in by pressing the scene button over here and you've got this list here and you can scroll up and down. You won't select any of these until you push it in. I'm going to just press back here this square button. So to select a scene like I say you press the scene button you scroll with the screen knob 
These are set out in alphabetical order. So right at the top, we've got Amelia City Line, and right down the bottom, we've got, at the moment, Venus Theory Psychedelics. Uh, while you're scrolling, you can see the screen you've got currently selected in the top right, which is quite handy. Obviously, if you press back at any point, you'll just go straight back to that scene. So each scene offers one or three synths set out to be played on these 60 pads. And like I said, the total polyphony of these pads is eight voices. So with this three synth setup, you could have two synths with one voice each and another with six voices. Let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna press this screen knob in and you can see here, hopefully, that the blue synth, that's the synth you play on these blue pads, has got two voices. The yellow synth has got one voice and the magenta synth, the purple synth, has got two. Uh, but you could change that if you wanted to. So I've got two voices on the blue pad, so I could play two sounds at once. One on the yellow pads, so I can only play that in a kind of mono way, and there are two on the magenta. Now, if you look at the layout of this screen, you can see you've got three along the top, three in the middle, three at the bottom. So voices, 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 that's these three knobs here. MIDI in out, these three knobs. Local mode, these three knobs. So if I crank this knob here top right, you should see the voices of the magenta synth go up. There they go, and obviously the most I can get is five. Five plus one plus two makes eight. Okay, so I boosted the amount of pads that I could play simultaneously on the magenta synth by three there, up to five. If you get lost at any point, just press scene and back and you know, you can always load the scene back in again. So I could just click that. Do I want to reload the current scene? Yes. And now that will be set back to the way it was, which is quite a handy feature, isn't it? So this colored layout is called a grid, blue and yellow and magenta. So like I said, you can play the pads to get the sounds. Now, if you hold the shift button down and press a pad like this, it will sustain. If you want to stop it sustaining, double press the shift button. Now, this blue pad hasn't got a sequencer or an arpeggiator attached to it. So it just works in a normal way, like you're pressing a key down on a synthesizer. The yellow sound and the magenta sound, the, in other words, the synth that's attached to the yellow and the synth that's attached to the magenta, they've got, well, let's have a look, sequencer, press the sequencer button. Now, these three buttons here are directly attached to the three synths. So this is blue, this is yellow, and this is magenta. It's showing me that on the blue synth, this one here, there is no sequencer or arpeggiator, it's turned off. If I press the yellow pad, which is dim at the moment, as soon as I press it, it becomes bright. You can see it says seek here, sequencer. So there's a sequencer on the yellow synth. Okay, and if I press the magenta pad, it's very dim, but you know it's always the far right one and you see that's got an arpeggiator on it. Okay. And so if you hold the shift down and press one of those buttons on the yellow or the uh, magenta, let's do the, the yellow one, let's go to the yellow uh, and we'll just, this is the sequencer. Now that's gonna keep going until I double press the shift button. Like that. Now, there are 12 grid layouts available. So the blue synth has got 14 pads available. The yellow synth has got 21 pads available. And the magenta synth has got 25 pads available. But if we press the screen knob in and go to grid, scroll down to grid, press it again. And if you look in the top left-hand corner, it says grid layout Florida. It's actually short for Florida man. Now, to be able to scroll through the grid layouts, look at where this vertical line is here, and that refers to this vertical line here. So we're gonna to need to turn the C1 knob, which is this one here, in order to change the grid layout. I'm gonna try and do this so I don't obliterate the screen. So if I turn this, 
you'll see it's scrolling through all the grid layouts and they're changing and as soon as you let go it will just go to that now this one here is all purple all 60 pads are on the purple synth so Florida man like I said is the one at the top the one it defaults to three by three is quite a useful one because this is equally divided across the three synths so you've got 20 on the blue 20 on the yellow and 20 on the magenta let's just turn that back to Florida man as soon as you let go it defaults to that none of the grids currently offer a two up option so you can only have one synth or three at the moment I'm not quite sure there's probably a really good reason for that so if I scroll down to the bottom here you can see this is all blue this is all yellow and this is all purple see and I'll show you how to assign synths to the pads a little bit later on this is just the sort of nuts and bolts if you like so this Florida man grid layout is three synths blue yellow and a magenta a very good way of getting started is to initialize the device so if I go to scene press scene so you see this middle pad here directly above it it says in it which is short for initialize so if I press that do you want to save the current scene so obviously if you've made some edits you do want to save it I'm not worried about that so I'm gonna say no so I'm gonna press this button here on the left this is directly below now to so press that and now I've got this set up here Now it's jumped to the mixer view and if I just play the pads it's the same sound across all three sets of pads I've got that Florida man set up 14 21 and 25 and it's jumped to the mixer page so I'm on this mixer page if I press these pads along the bottom takes me to the three pages for the synths and you can see it's the same synth which is ACD the acid synth for all three they're all set up the same the only thing that is different is the octave set up the actual pitch so all three synths if I press the screen knob in and I go to grid scroll down press again you can see all three are set up to note there's no chords here the blue synth is set up to a root of c1 the yellow is c2 and the magenta is c3 so they're getting progressively higher we're set to a scale of c minor so if i play um, those notes in that kind of left to right going up you can hear that's a c minor scale don't worry if you don't understand that at the moment it's not important the notes that are brightly lit hopefully you can see that these are all C's they're all the root note of the scale which is quite handy isn't it I guess the idea is that the blue synth could be the bass the yellow synth the pad and the magenta synth could be the lead but of course it doesn't have to be that way now out of the box the grid sensitivity is set to fixed velocity which is 127 so that means no matter how hard or how soft you press the pads, you'll get the same volume. I've changed mine. I'll show you how you do that. Press this screen knob in again. Scroll down to system settings. Click. And if you look at grid sensitivity, it's saying fixed velocity equals 127. So if I click on that again, and you can see these, all these options. I find the best one is normal. So scroll to that. Click again to select it. And then... I can get different velocities, different volume by pressing harder or softer. So these pads are touch sensitive. When you initialize a scene like this, all three synths, the blue, the yellow, and the magenta, will have the sequencer or arpeggiator set to off. So the blue is set to off, the yellow is off, and the magenta is off so there's no sequences or arpeggiators running at the moment and later on I'll show you how to change that how to set those up now I'm going to come back I'm going to come down to grid with the screen knob click and I'm going to change the magenta synth to play minor chords so to do that I'm going to change the note here to chord did you see that? It's a bit hard to see, isn't it? Scroll note, chord scale, chord, chord pack. Chord is the one you want. 
Now, at the moment, these are set to power fourths. So I'm going to turn this middle encoder. Can you see that it's lined up with this middle row here, far right, middle row, far right, see? I'm going to turn that. I want minor, so there we are. Now, when I play these pads, they're all minor chords. Going to leave the root note at C3, that's fine for the moment. Now, I'm going to set the blue synth to follower. So how do I do that? Right, you can see that it's to the right of the vertical line, first encoder, so let's get my hand out of the way. Turn this and change that to follower. Now it says follower here in the display. So when I press a pad on the blue synth, you can hear that it's changing. I'm playing the same pad but as I play different pads on the magenta, the, you can see the lights moving around on the blue pad. The blue pad notes are going to change so that they harmonize with the notes in the magenta synth. And I'll show you a, a practical demonstration of that a bit later. Now, because the scale is set to minor, C minor, all the chords on the magenta synth will be minor. So we'll have C minor, D minor, E flat minor, F minor, G minor, a flat minor, B flat minor, C minor again. It keeps repeating it over the three plus octave range. Okay? Now, if I set the chord mode to chord scale, so if I go to the mode up here, top right hand corner for the uh, purple synth, and change this to chord scale, like this, now my chords will be based on the set scale of C minor. So as I run up, They're all based on that scale. Now this is getting a bit into music theory. Now we have C minor. Actually, I'll start over here so it's a little bit higher pitched. We have C minor, D diminished, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, B flat major, and C minor. And it just keeps going. So you can actually set the chords to play different chords according to the mode. This is a bit deep, I know, but at least it shows you how you can set this up. If you set the chord mode to chord pack, let's just move this again, top right hand corner, chord pack. Now you can see second encoder down, it's saying unname. So you can go through all these different chord packs, see them changing there. So if I go to this one, cycle. Lots of possibilities there. This, by the way, is not saved with the scene, but you can edit these chords and you can save them to the card so you can use this particular chord pack with another scene. Again, it's a bit deep, so I'm not gonna go too far into that. Right, that's probably enough for lesson one. There's quite a lot there to take on, but that's sort of a good start. In the next session, we're gonna get into the synths and the patches changing the sounds. So I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching and you'll see me in my next video.